<laughs> Yerevan, welcome back to Hangul Chanje. It is now time for History of the Week, and today's topic is one that's particularly interesting to me. I have a Chin An Hyung in intern, and I've learned so much about this topic from him. 이번 주에 우리가 알아볼 역사는 바로 인천 상륙 작전입니다. So this week we're going to learn about Operation Chromite. Let's get into it. 그럼 내일 9월 15일은 1950년 9월 15일 인천 상륙 작전이 있는지 73년째가 되는 날입니다. 인천 상륙 작전이 실패했다면 지금의 한반도는 전부 북한이 됐을 거라고 많은 전문가들이 입을 모아 말할 만큼 한국 역사에 있어서 정말로 중요한 작전입니다. So tomorrow, it's September the 15th, where we mark the 73rd anniversary of the Incheon Landing Operation, otherwise known as Operation Chromite. And this took place originally on September 15th, 1950, so it was 73 years ago. So the Incheon Landing is considered an incredibly crucial battle in Korean history. And many experts believe that if the operation had failed, the entire Korean peninsula may have just become all under North Korean rule. So, 한국 전쟁 초반, UN 연합군은 준비되지 않은 상태로 북한군과 맞서 싸우느라 부산 근처의 낙동강까지 밀려나고 마는데요. 여기서 한동안 밀고 당기며 진척이 없는 상태가 지속됩니다. So at the beginning of the Korean War, the South Korean and the UN coalition forces were unprepared and so they were pushed back by the North Korean troops to the Nakdong River near Busan. So for a while there was a complete stalemate when neither side was making significant progress. 하지만 이렇게 파죽지세로 밀어 붙이던 북한군에게도 약점이 있었으니 바로 북한 땅에서부터 멀리 떨어져 있다는 거였습니다. 병사들은 지쳐 있고 한번 보급로가 끊기면 오히려 고립된다는 점이었습니다. 원래 전쟁은 병사들 먹을 것을 끊기지 않게 하는 것이 승부를 가른다고 할 정도로 중요합니다. So the advancing North Korean forces had a key weakness. They were stretched too far and thin away from their homeland. So the soldiers were exhausted and any, in, any interruption or disruption to their supply lines could leave them completely screwed over. So in warfare, maintaining supply lines and food and making sure that your troops have food to eat is very crucial and it's often the determination factor of who wins the war. So, 낙동강 방어선부터 반격을 할 경우 38선까지 다시 밀어붙이는 데만 해도 사상자가 10만 명 이상 발생할 것이고 그 기간도 상당할 거라고 예상됐습니다. 그래서 당시 UN군 사령관이던 더글리스 맥아더 장군은 인천의 병력을 상륙시켜 북한군을 절반으로 갈라놓는 대담한 작전을 떠올리고 실행에 옮기게 되었습니다. So there were estimates that a counter attack from the Nakdong River near Busan from that defense line could actually cause over 100,000 casualties and that would take a considerable amount of time to push back up to the 38th parallel. So General Douglas MacArthur, the UN force commander at the time, he conceived the daring plan to land troops in Incheon and split the North Korean forces completely in half. Now, I'm, I'm really invested in this story, but before we go on, let's go listen to a quick song, On My Way by Alan Walker, Sabrina Carpenter and Faruko. Yarabun, welcome back to Hangul Chanje. We are talking about the history of the week, and today's topic is Incheon Sangyuk Chakjeon, the Operation Chromite, because tomorrow is the 73rd anniversary. So let's continue with this story. 그럼 본래 맥아더 장군을 제외한 대부분의 사람들은 
인천 상륙 작전을 반대했습니다. 인천은 파도가 매우 험하고 밀물과 설물의 차이가 심했어 그랬습니다. 밀물 때 상륙하지 못하면 갯벌을 수백 미터 질주해야 했고 주변에 숨을 곳도 없어서 그야말로 개 죽음이 예상되었습니다. 반대로 밀물 때 상륙한다고 해도 호텔을 못하니 그야말로 성공하거나 죽거나 였습니다. 둘 중에 하나뿐. 유엔군과 미군 측에서 내놓은 이 작전의 성공 확률은 20%도 되지 않는다는 것이었습니다. So the UN and US military were estimating that the success of the probability of success for this Operation Chromite would be less than 20%. So the Incheon landing operation was opposed by almost every single person except for General MacArthur because Incheon's tides are very treacherous with significant differences between high and low tides. So if the troops didn't land during high tide, they'd have to race across hundreds of meters of mud flats with absolutely nowhere to hide, which is obviously dangerous in the middle of a war. But on the other hand, if they landed during high tide, that means they wouldn't be able to retreat, making it a do or die situation. 하지만 Meg Ada 장군은 작전을 자신의 권한으로 밀어붙이기로 했습니다. 적의 병력을 허리 자르듯이 절반으로 자르려면 인천 외에는 다른 선택지가 없었기 때문입니다. 그래서 이 작전은 극비의 극비로 진행될 만큼 너무나 중요했습니다. 인천 상륙 작전의 영어명이 Operation 인천이 아니라 Operation Chromite인 거죠. 왜냐하면 아무 상관없는 광석 이름을 붙여서 기밀이 세나가도 어떤 작전인지 모르게 하기 위해서였습니다. So, General MacArthur, regardless of all the pushback, still insisted that they go ahead with this operation and using his authority, they decided to do it. And the reason they did this was because there was no other viable option to cut the enemy forces in half. So the operation was so critical that it was conducted under extreme secrecy. To the point where the English name for the Incheon landing operation isn't Operation Incheon, it's Operation Chromite. And the name Chromite is a seemingly unrelated mineral, but it was chosen because it would ensure that there were no leaks so that no one would know about where the operation was or anything about its nature. 결국 1950년 9월 15일 새벽 5시 상륙 작전이 시작되었습니다. 미군과 한국군, 영연방군, 그리고 네덜란드군의 총병력 7만여 명이 동원됐죠. 작전은 먼저 팔미도 능대를 점령한 뒤 월미도 점령과 인천 해안의 교도부, 교두부, 반대로 교두부 확보의 순서로 진행되었습니다. 밀물과 설물 때문에 하루 2회씩 5일간 총 10회에 걸쳐 병력, 물자, 장비 등의 상륙 작전을 진행했다고 하는데요. 연합군 손실은 매우 미미해서 작전은 대성공을 거두게 되죠. So finally at 5 a.m. on September the 15th, 1950, the Incheon landing operation began. Approximately 70,000 troops from the US, South Korea, the Commonwealth, and the Netherlands were brought into the operation, and it began with the occupation of the Palmy Island Lighthouse, followed by the occupation of Wolmi Island, Wolmido, and the securing of a foothold across the Incheon coast. Now, due to the ebb and flow of the tides, the high and the low tides, the entire operation was conducted across five days, with two, I guess, send-outs every single day, totaling 10 landings. So five times two, we had 10 landings in total. And the coalition forces incurred very minimal losses, resulting in a highly successful operation. Incheon 상륙 작전은 한국군과 유엔군이 불리했던 전쟁의 상황을 단숨에 뒤집었어요. 양 옆으로 샌드위치처럼 끼인 북한군은 힘도 써보지 못하고 속수무책으로 당했습니다. 이후 한반도의 통일을 거의 
이룰 뻔했고 중국의 개입과 휴전으로 지금의 군사 붕괴선이 만들어지게 됐지만 지금 우리 모두 공산국가에서 살지 않을 수 있었던 건 인천 상륙 작전이 큰 공헌을 했다고 볼수 있습니다. So the Incheon landing operation was the tide turner for the war, making South Korea and UN forces the almost complete victors because the North Korean troops were caught in a pincer movement like a sandwich, which led to them being defeated without a particular fight. So South Korea almost achieved complete unification under a democratic regime, but the subsequent intervention by China and the subsequent armistice agreement established the current military demarcation line. Now, we can say that the Incheon landing operation played a significant role in ensuring that we live in a democratic South Korea today rather than a unified communist peninsula. Okay, what an interesting story. I've learned so much today. So let's go listen to a quick song and we'll be back with the answer to our nonsense quiz. We're going to listen to Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> 